Again, we have the texture here and texture there. This is uh, the bottom of the western side. Look at the step. Five meters away, another step. Five meters away, another step. And the slope is about eight degrees. So what they got with the slope and the steps, they have some type of the spiral, like a spiral ramp, which goes around the western side. And then it connects to the south side. We saw the terrace on the south side, at the same angle. So we got like a spiral going around the pyramids. The first known structures to the mainstream science are the Babylonian ziggurats. And ziggurats had the same thing, the spiral ramps going all the way to the top. And uh, it served to transport the material and the people. Now we are close to the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. We removed about one meter of soil. And what we found, we found very nice paved terrace, sandstone plates. We opened the hole here to see how the profile looks like. What we found in the hole, beside myself, are the layers of sandstone plates and blocks. Or more closely, block, block, layer of clay. Clay again being used as the adhesive material. Block, block, clay, block, block, and so on and so forth. I've seen probably about 300 pyramids in the world, and uh, this is maybe one of the biggest one. Four kilometers from the pyramid sites, we found an interesting rounded hill, perfect geometry. Rounded hill with the body in the back. A mile from here, there is another very interesting hill, or the Tor, how they used to call it thousands of years back. I would say the Tor here and this hill here got the same shape, rounded in the front with the body in the back. The Tor here is built from clay, limestone, and sandstone. This hill here is built from the clay and the sandstone. This is the area where we did the excavation. This is what we found. Left, Bivil. The second thing, the Bosnia stone spheres. Stone spheres, we know about them in Costa Rica. Somebody mentioned that yesterday. They said that uh, nobody knows what they search for. Well, uh, I kindly disagree. Some of them, like this one here on the surface, what it has is something like a picture. But actually, 20, 28 star systems. When you connect them, you actually you get these carvings here. So obviously, some of the stone spheres in Costa Rica were used as the you know, calendars, astronomical calendars. Some more. In most cases, out of 400 uh, stone spheres found in Costa Rica in the uh, delta of the river Diques, they are built from uh, granite, granodiorite. And just one from Coquina, that's on the island about 25 kilometers from Costa Rica, Coquina, it's some type of a sandstone. The stone spheres in uh, Western Mexico, 250 of them, they are of volcanic material. The stone spheres are of course on uh, Easter Island and they are found in New Zealand and the Western US. And in Bosnia, of all European countries only in Bosnia, this is one of the biggest Egyptian geologists, Dr. Ali Barakat, who is a member of our team. This stone sphere is perfectly spherical. There is no error, there is no tolerance. The tolerance is less than two centimeters. Perfectly shaped and perfectly finished. More places. Our foundation have located 20 different locations where we found the Bosnian stone spheres. That was totally unknown to the archaeologists and geologists in Bosnia until we founded our foundation. And more of them. The stone spheres in Bosnia were, were built from volcanic material, from granite and sandstone. The same thing like in Costa Rica, Mexico and Easter Island. This one is a uh, obviously from granite, 
We found eight like this in uh, northeastern Bosnia. Granite never come free in the shape of the sphere, meaning that they are man-made. Somebody shaped them. On the scale from one to six of the hardness, granite is number six. In order to shape such a hard material, you have to have very advanced tools. Just until three, four thousand years ago, the only metals that were known to the people was copper. On a, the same scale, from one to six, copper is number three. You cannot shape such hard material with inferior tools. So even though these stone balls are dead now, we don't know their builders. What we know about them is that they did have advanced tooling. If we had to shape this today, we would need diamond tools. If we had to shape eight tons or 15 tons stone spheres or 40 tons like in Costa Rica or 50 tons like in Mexico, the biggest ones, we would need at least two cranes to maneuver them. So obviously these are the traces of very advanced prehistoric civilization. Volcanic. Okay, this one, <laughs> during the last war, obviously the, the military was here. This is 101st Brigade Logistics. Very interesting thing, after they painted this, after the war, they tried to remove the paint. They could not do it. And now they're saying it's because of some energy which, you know, protects the paint. <laughs> okay, so we had the stone pyramids, we had the stone spheres, now we have the stone megalithic prehistoric towns in Bosnia. This one is in southern Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's called the Daur Son. According to the mainstream science, Daur Son was built by the Illyrian tribes. They were there like 2,600 years ago, before the ancient Greece. Illyrian tribes, tribes. Now, let's take a look at this stone block. Usually they are about one meter to one meter and a half thick. The weight, three, five, eight, 12 tons. Perfectly cut. They fit perfectly. You put the credit card, you cannot go through. Now, can the tribe, does the tribe have the social organization to cut such pieces, to transport them for a couple of three kilometers on the top of the hill and then feed them so perfectly. We are not talking tribes here, we are talking advanced civilization. A few more photos. The walls. Peru, Mexico, Egypt, Easter Island, Bosnia. More angles. Number four, that was rather quick. What are mainstream science in Bosnia called medieval tombstones? 66,000 pieces like this were, are registered in Bosnia, Herzegovina, 66,000. The mainstream science is saying that uh, during the medieval times, the Bosnians who lived then, you know, left their you know, symbols, signs, pictures, and they are saying they originated from that time. But actually they are wrong. Less than 1% of these stone monuments have any of the markings, any carvings. Less than 1%. It looks to me that they were built long, long time ago, and then when the new people, new culture came, they left their markings, like this one here. And the markings are always on the surface. So the way they carved it was on the surface, so they already found those pieces. Some of them are real nice. Medieval, most probably. But perfectly carved, made in one piece. More than three kilometers from this side. Five tons, ten tons. Bosnia is the land of wonders. The last week of August, uh, our foundation is going to organize the first international scientific conference about the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. 
The chairman of the conference will be one mainstream scientist. His name is Dr. Nabil Svelim. He has three PhDs, and he has uh, written a number of books about the Egyptian pyramids. And he's probably the most respected expert on, uh, on pyramids in Egypt. And the chairman of the scientific conference will be a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Professor Kavroshkin. He's a geophysicist. He has done some research in our Valley of the Pyramids as well. And uh, what he does, you know, he's uh, measuring the seismics of the archaeological structures in Siberia, in Egypt, in Bosnia. When com comparing Egyptians and Bosnian pyramids, he concluded that both archaeological sites, the structures in both uh, cases, behave the same. They behave like the artificial stone structures, not the natural hills. And of course, I'd like to thank you for your attention.